shadow cuts light. Stone shadow, stone shadow, leaf shadow, dark, dark, light, light, blue, blue, brown, brown, blue. So, you have a couple of films that are dedicated to different kind of artistic express expressions. One film is about avant-garde jazz, another film is about circus and nomadic people. This film that is going to be shown in Riga is about poetry, about American minimalistic poet Robert Lux. Why did you make this choice to make a film about poetry, and how did you find him? Well, <laughs> I think uh, we always thought that our kind of movies uh, have a lot to do with poetry, you know. It's, if I think about our movies, then it's um, the, we, we try to build up with images and sounds something similar than poetry does and not so much telling a whole story narrating in, a, in inside of a story but finding new combinations of images and sounds that evoke something else that uh, the, the that uh, the simple reality that you are in so I think it's all variations also step across the border and middle of the moment had been already kind of poems and we called even as uh, middle of the moment was in the subtitle by, uh, with the, the title by, with a with, uh, as um, cine poem, cine poem, you know, as, uh, poems for cinema. So it's all, if you, if I think about our work, it, 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 uh, it's all in one. It's uh, all, it, it's only variations on one theme, and the theme is, is of course, uh, poetry is a strong, strong thing inside of that. Yeah. Where, when and where did you hear about Robert Lux for the first time? Because in Latvia he's completely unknown. Well, so far he has been um, unknown to most of the people because maybe one of the most extraordinary things we discovered with Robert Lux is that he's a man of great qualities who is not interested in getting famous which is quite unusual because uh, even many people with much less qualities than he has have only one big wish uh, just to be published, to be famous, to be acclaimed, to be in TV. And uh, it was very amazing to meet somebody who is not, and that's why he's not so known, simply. And the same way is also the other side of your question, how did we come to meet Robert Lux? Uh, we had not known anything about Robert Lux, but in a very special situation, we uh, heard his voice. Actually, it was his voice. Uh, Nicholas heard it on the radio, I heard it from a tape, and we were simply impressed by, by the voice of him reading his poetry. So we decided to, we have to go and see this man. And then out of this meeting, which also was um, Maybe not like one would think uh, when you make a long way to meet somebody just because you heard his voice and you would... It was very relaxed, the meeting. It was simply an old man opening his door and said, Hello, there you are. <laughs> and, and out of this came a, a year-long friendship that lasted, actually it started in 1992 or two or three, 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 93, and it lasted till he died in uh, 1999. Coming of dark. Coming of dark. Coming of light. Coming of light. Coming of dark. Coming of 
gone. Okay. We had collected over the Coming. years something like 20 hours of material that we yeah. shot with him. Um, we couldn't imagine it as a linear movie like we are used to see this, one shot after the other. Because his perception of time and the, the, the time feeling that, that he transmits while you are with him is somehow different than the, the velocity of our times. Uh, it has a lot to do also with the ab ability to be silent but and attend at the same time, like not sleepy, <laughs> but being attent and silent at the same time and not feeling uncomfortable when you are silent. Most people today, uh, when it comes down to silence, they feel insecure and then they switch on the TV, take it, make a telephone call. You hardly cannot share silence with people. And so for us, it was very also a, a thing. We, we had much fun in sharing silence, like, like we had fun in making jokes on each other also. Uh, so we tried to find a form for, the, for, all, for all of this. And then uh, in moments when we really, we always, we liked our material, but we thought this linear form of movie, it doesn't work. And then one night we came to the idea, how would it be if we put it on three screens simultaneously? So you, you have not only this uh, vertical line, but you also start to create a horizontal line. So the movie not was only running vertically, but it's running horizontally. And also you start to have the, the possibility of, there's always one image, if you have three images at the same time, which stays the longest. This is starts to, it's something like the past already. And one image which is the most fresh, so you have the, the present. And so you can get much more close, actually, to not only Robert Lacks, but to our human situation, because we are always in this somehow our mind is occupied either with the memories of the past or it is we're already thinking of the next coffee or what will be tomorrow or and so we we, we, we hardly never come to the the present would you say that this uh, work this visual poetical work has a composition of a cross of a cross, I wouldn't say a cross, um, but uh, it was very interesting for us in finding the right form because each piece of uh, art, as you know, has to have its own form. Even if you know about the content that you want to express, you, you have to find the right form for it. So it was very clear that um, we started with the idea of three images. But first of all, we thought that we would uh, put the images one in the center and one right and one left, you know, just in um, creating uh, the space. And while we started editing, so you, it's always also interesting that you are in a process that is in a constant um, transformation, that even if you have set a certain kind of form for this piece of art, you have to you, you need the ability to change this kind of decision all the time and to be open for the new influences that come from the material, that come from the, the piece of art because it's a constant dialogue between you and the thing you want to express. So when we started editing, it was, it, it was in the first phase, it was already obvious that this construction of one center and two left and right wouldn't be the right thing for, for you or for, for the thing because uh, as a spectator you would have you were, you were forced to change your perception all the time through make decisions which image you want to observe and the others you, can't, you couldn't. So during the editing uh, we found out that we have to place it place the three images one like a big panorama you know and then then you come back to the Christian form to a triptych it became a triptych and um, it was funny that we came back to such an old form you know without being um, without having the will to construct a triptych but at the end it turned out to be a triptych and also in um, judging about the images what will be a left image a right image a center image we found out that there are certain rules and certain logic behind that one image 
has to stand in the, in the center because it has a certain qualities to be there and not on the right or on the left. So it was a constant question to the images, what is the right place for the images to be? And yeah. So it's like a new form of, it's um, an icon, like an orthodox icon for moving images. Could we say it so? Yeah. yeah. In, so, in some way. Yeah. Very interesting. It's also interesting for us, or also to explain it to others. If you think about three images at the same time, you always would think, what a, what a crowd of images at the same time that you have to perceive. So, and on, on the other hand, we have to deal with silence and with reduction, with minimalism. So, how to find a form, a minimal form, with more information than one image? This was a very big challenge for us. Would it work? Uh, that, that you don't have the feeling to be overwhelmed by, by all these images and all this material because it wouldn't fit to him as a person in this very reduced and minimalized form of self-expression that, that he had chosen for himself. So it, also this was a big challenge for us, you know, working with three images at the same time but being more minimalist than in the works that we had done before. So. strengthened by greetings, not even in the realm of desire, standing outside, looking in, standing inside, looking out. Robert Lux um, was born in the United States and as you already told, he influenced the generation of Beatnik uh, poets and writers. Uh, uh, what did he tell you? Why did he make this decision? And why did he move to Patmos Island? Well, this was growing in him, I think, through a longer period of time in his biography. I mean, he has seen all the world. He has been a film critic with the, uh, with the New Yorker magazine, and he has been even a scriptwriter in Hollywood. And uh, I think he lived up when, when, when he started to work, travel with, a, with, a, with an Italian circus through Canada, him playing the clown, and then he found the chance uh, to be the, the editor for some magazine traveling, roving in Europe. And he once said he had like uh, money in his pockets for three weeks when he arrived uh, in a small Greek island. Um, and he suddenly decided to stay there. And so he did for 30 years then. And if you asked him about if he's not missing kind of the, also the artistic life that happens in big cities like New York where he came from, uh, he said, well, you know, at a certain point in New York you always get the same questions and the same answers. And uh, I couldn't anymore repeat uh, the New York questions and answers day by day. And I guess for he, for himself, knew very clearly that he would find new answers or, or new questions. Already new questions is something very valuable. Uh, just if he, if he goes away from all this uh, big town, being important, who says what, uh, <laughs> what's in the media, what's not in the media, all to leave all this behind and uh, look for, for quiet moments where he, he can really concentrate on um, what is there because uh, you, you could feel with him uh, uh, what, what any, anybody of us can feel it. We have a universe in ourselves. If we only get quiet enough inside, it opens doors inside uh, which uh, the most fantastic Hollywood movie cannot imagine and we all have it for free inside but we're not kind of we're not listening to it and uh, I guess um, he's one of those persons who could open those doors to his own mind really and and, and listen to his own mind uh, uh, and and bring it out in his poetry that was all he wanted <laughs> yeah can I I mean, it was always a very simple answer then that he gave, had given, that he said, I just w wanted to have a remote place to write. This was all 
Do I remember correctly that you filmed 20 hours of material with Robert Lux? We had our regular uh, voyage to Patmos every year. Every year we went to Patmos for two weeks or three weeks, something like that. And during this phases we were shooting with him. So you have different materials through all these years and you also can feel the, the, his transformation, his aging, for example, which is very interesting. For me, it's very important that this uh, three windows is shown now is in Riga, in um, in times um, when uh, the war in Iraq has come to end, as they as they tell us, you know, we don't know what is going to happen next. Um, I would like to ask you about the reaction of German intellectuals to the war in Iraq. To my surprise, actually the strongest force that I felt that was coming from the young people, from 16 to 20 year old people, from, from the expression, from going to the street, much more than from the older intellectuals. Of course, it's a, German intellectuals have a tradition, especially since World War II, uh, to be very sensitive to any language that praises war doesn't matter from where it comes, very suspicious about that because the experience that Germany had with its own fascism that went all over Europe uh, makes it very difficult to, uh, to walk behind people that say we have to go fight the war to get victory or to resolve problems. I, don't, I think basically Germans have a strong feeling that you can't resolve any problem by making war, you will just make it bigger. Uh, but the amazing thing now was that for a long time, actually, the, the young people, they kind of had the feeling all this, what has it to do with, we like to think about our clothes and our fun and dancing and what is all this war, what do we have to do? And this time you had a very st strong feeling, they have the feeling that there is something generally wrong in this attitude of... Uh, some people saying, we have the right, we know what's right and wrong, and we have the right to impose to other people to behave the way that we want to, the world has to behave, and if somebody is not with us, then he's against us, and who is really against us will be killed, and we have the right to kill the one who is against us. And I think there was a strong feeling that this attitude is, is deeply wrong, simply as an attitude. What, what are you working at now? Can you tell us what will be your next film? The Oriole films have been shown at Arsenal's. Well, I mean, different. different. Every, every five years there's a new movie. Uh, and now we thought of, after all these different um, approaches and experiments with music movie, with a movie that we called a cine poem, like middle of the moment, now this this approach to the art scene in a way through three windows. Now we feel like making our own, uh, our first uh, fiction movie together. You know, so we are just working on a scenario, on a on a, on a story, screenplay. on a screenplay. For the first time, we um, are really writing <laughs> before and not after having edited the films. And um, yeah, we hope that we will realize that. Thank you.